This program is a presentation of University of California Television. Your support makes UCTV's programming possible. Contribute online at uctv.tv slash support. Check out our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, at youtube.com slash UCTV Prime. Subscribe today to get new programs every week. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody, welcome to Westwood. This is UCLA Bruin Talk. Alongside Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus. We are back. UCLA Athletics is back. It's a new athletic season just about to start. A great time on the Westwood campus. While we have a moment, we want to thank John Ramey for doing such a fine job driving the show in July when we were out. Allison, it should be a great season and can't wait to get it underway. Before we meet our first guests, let's take a look at the upcoming events. Look at those upcoming events, and they are right around the corner. It's such an exciting time of year when athletics is getting going again. Our first guest, however, is going to have to wait because she's a spring sport, but doing a lot of work in the summertime and in the fall season. Braley High Rose Holbert is a water polo player for the great UCLA water polo team. What a legacy of success that team has. Thanks for joining us on Bruin Talk. Yeah, no problem. Let's talk about the summer. What do you do in the summertime to kind of keep your competitive edge? Um, well, we've been in a few, quite a few tournaments. Actually, we played like 25 games in five weeks. Um, and we've set up a lot of scrimmages. And yeah, we practice three days a week. So I mean, we stay in pretty good shape. We kind of just stick together as a team. You know. And attending summer school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I'm actually working in the recruiting office and stuff too. So yeah, a few of us have jobs, internships, and yeah, we make time for practice and stuff, so it's great. We talk about the tradition of UCLA water polo, and it's obviously a great program, lots of national championships. It was the Bruin water polo team that mm -hmm. got the championship number 100 and a great win over Stanford. How does that legacy of success translate to the current players? Um, well, it really motivates us, you know, I mean, like doing hard swim sets, I mean, you just stare up on that wall in speaker and you see those NC2A plaques and it, it really makes you kick harder. And so it's, it's just fantastic knowing that we have that tradition behind us. Going along with the tradition of the great UCLA water polo program, the USA Olympic team has quite a few Bruins on board, and I know that you've been watching the games online as well as on TV. What kind of impact does that have on you? I mean, much less your teammates here at UCLA, but Olympians, that's got to motivate you even more. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely like we'll be all like we watched the we T-voted it um, just the other night, and we watched the game and like Courtney Matthews and we're like, oh, she's a Bruin, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it's it's really great, and it's just no like like the same thing, knowing that we have that kind of legacy behind us, just really yeah, it drives us and motivates us a lot. And if you're anything like me, I'm sure you watch the matches over and over. I watch the gymnastics meets like a hundred times, <laughs> so I'm sure you're watching it over and over, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. When Adam Adam actually he got hit or whatever and the um the player from Romania actually got rolled and we like te we we winded it and like we <laughs> we watched it a billion times it was great <laughs> the head coach of UCLA women's water polo for years also men's water polo Adam Krikorian leading the USA women in the Olympics Brandon Brooks took over here it's been a pretty seamless transition hasn't it yeah, you know, I, I would agree with that. Um, I think especially because he was an assistant coach before, so he was really around the pool, and it was, I think it's been good. Bradley, not only watching the great Bruins, Courtney Matthewson, four goals in the opening match of the Olympic Games, but you get a chance to see a lot of your opposition. There's a lot of players from the MPSF, mm -hmm. Stanford, mm -hmm. SC players are all over the Olympics. Yeah. It's got to be interesting watching them play in that international competition, knowing you're going to be in the pool against them again. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. It's for Maggie Steffen, seven goals. That's absolutely fantastic. And it's not even that she's going to Stanford next year. It's just we're sitting there like, wow, she's amazing, you know? <laughs> but in the back of your mind, you've got to be thinking, hey, I'm going to be in the tank with her. We're going to have to stop her when she comes down. She's an incoming freshman mm. for Stanford, mm -hmm. but obviously is going to be a key to John Tanner's attack. you got to kind of strategize as you're watching yeah. her. <laughs> yeah, well, um, like... I mean, it kind of just depends. Like, we were watching the way, like, her teammates set her up, and we were, I mean, we thought that, like, I mean, that's obviously something we can work on, like our perimeter passing. And a lot of her shots were just catch and shoot, and she made it look so seamless. And we just figured, you know, I mean, if she can play, if she can do that on an, on an, international, on an international level, like, I mean, it, it should be... It should be fun to do that and practice and get that down together. Are you watching the games with your teammates? Yeah. We, we had Taco Tuesday last night, and we, yeah, we watched the game and stuff, so it's great. So, I mean, a great opportunity to see how all the teams strategize and approach the, the play. Yeah, I mean, so that, that's really cool, but like the way they move the ball on the perimeter and how they shift and everything, and so it, it's, it's fun. Let's talk about your water polo career. So many youngsters growing up in Southern California play water polo. You grew up in Hawaii. You played at the prestigious Punahou School and then came over to UCLA. What, what got you on the airplane over to the mainland for your college career? <laughs> um, well, I definitely, I'd have to say, like, it was, uh, it was Brandon. I mean, especially because, I mean, he could actually come out and see me play. And um, my, my coach was actually a Bruin, my high school coach, and, and he's coached a few Bruins. And um, so that was really my connection. And I think that really gave me an opportunity to, like, actually show my skills and stuff. And I think, yeah, that's really what like got me on, got me up here. Coming from Hawaii, it has to be a big transition moving to Los Angeles. It's a much different world out here than basically anywhere else in the United mm. States. I, I know I came from somewhere else too. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about your transition, not only athletically, but academically and socially. It's different living in Los Angeles. Well, I, I honestly, I think my transition into LA was absolutely fantastic. It was absolutely seamless. And I mean, I'd have to like credit it to like the group of girls that I walked into, just like our, like our family as a team. It's, it's so great. They made it so easy to just like fit right in. And academically, I think Pano School really did an excellent job of preparing me for like college courses and that kind of thing. So academically, it wasn't too challenging stepping into the college atmosphere. And I mean, athletically, it was like, it was really evident my lack of experience in terms of just game situations. And I mean, physically, I felt like I was fine. I was on the same playing field, but like in terms of just game smarts and that kind of thing, I was, I was way far behind because I mean, California girls, they play uh, hundreds of games a summer, a year. And I mean, my high school season was 16 games, you know? So, I mean, that, that part was really evident. But, you know, like I said, with the support of the team, it's just, it's been great, you know? Really, kids worldwide grow up and they dream about going on vacation, say, oh, I want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> when you live in Hawaii, what do you dream of going to for a vacation? I mean, just somewhere with snow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, just, you, we're just so lucky 
that I mean it's kind of hard we compare beaches all the time <laughs> it must be a rough life you guys yeah, live in I mean, Hawaii oh, you know <laughs> yeah as, as the upcoming season approaches, we mentioned that the, yours is a spring sport. The men play their water polo mm -hmm. in the fall and the women play in the spring. As the fall comes around, will there be tournaments for the Bruins to, to get to know each other? Um, you know, I'm not really sure. Brandon does really, you know, he keeps the season under wraps for, mm -hmm. you know, you have to ask him <laughs> to figure out what, um, what we're going to do. But, um, yeah, I know, I know, I think it it was over spring break last year, but I think um, this year we are going to go to Hawaii again. UH has left the MPSF, but we're going to go out there for a tournament, I believe. And so I'm not sure if that's going to be in the fall. But um, yeah, we will have some tournaments, I think, before our season to like really get us together. Last year, the Bruins ended up finishing third in the NCAA. A lot of schools would be really happy with that. I know at UCLA, that's not the result that mm -hmm. the team wanted. It, 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 the team had great moments last year and then some moments of struggling. Uh, wrap up the experience of last year, the roller coaster ride it was for UCLA. Um, you know, I really think it was just us playing up to our potential. And in those great moments, like when we just were in sync, those were just absolutely fantastic. But I mean, like I think as in all teams, we did lose touch sometimes. And we did, I think, kind of, yeah, we lost a little bit of focus. And I mean, I, I, I'm not necessarily saying that we were unfocused in the NC2A tournament, but like just like, you know, the bumps in the road during our regular season. Um, I think, yeah, focus was an issue. Well, there are very few teams that actually win their last game. And you won your last game. You won the third place match <laughs> against Irvine. That had to be a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, it, it was obviously to win. But I mean, you know, I, I mean, I haven't even taken my little third place trophy out of my box yet because it's it's not yeah it's not what we wanted and I think it's it's it definitely a testament to our program that we aren't happy finishing third even if we did end our season on a win you know I mean third place is a significant win but like we're talking about it's not good enough here at UCLA <laughs> you're expected to win all the time which is great but you're going into your second year now and so you have you've had a little bit of experience at UCLA in the classroom in the pool what kind of leadership skills are you going to try to impart on the freshmen coming in? I, it's a huge transition no matter where you're going to school. What kind of experiences are you going to try to let them be a part of? Um, well, just, just fun experiences. You know, I mean, you're coming in as a freshman, and our recruiting class is quite good. And I mean, they will be expected to provide, I mean, to provide for our team. And, you know, but like a few of them were stressing about getting classes at orientation you know but I just like and we told them repeatedly like just relax enjoy yourself like freshman year because you are you're a freshman and that's really like the time to just like test the waters and everything you know <laughs> so getting back to the Olympic coverage for a second they've had a lot of underwater camera shots and they've really mm -hmm. showed the women's game a lot more than the men because mm -hmm. the women you know there's a more more uniform to grab mm -hmm. um, do you think that's been eye-opening for the American public to see what goes on under the surface of the water? I hope so. <laughs> it <laughs> is for me. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, most people, I think, if they don't know water pool at all, um, they just think, I mean, it must be kind of like lame to them, see like people swim back and forth with a ball. But yeah, I think the underwater camera really gives them an idea of what happens, you know? So that's, yeah, I think it has. How a do lot. you prepare for that level of contact without killing each other in the, in the preseason? Um, Kill you, each other in the preseason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take anything personally. <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, yeah, there's not much you can do except be just as physical, you know? So. Well, I, I think that water polo in general, it's going to get a huge bump because the coverage this year appears to be a lot more extensive mm -hmm. than in the past. And hopefully that's going to translate to UCLA water polo. Tell us about the experience of playing in the beautiful Speaker Aquatic Center. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, like just at the end of practice, like sometimes like uh, towards the end of the season, we had practice from two to five. And so it would be right around like the sunset. And sometimes we'd be passing and Brandon would actually have to like stop practicing and be like, you know, just everybody look at the sky for a minute because I want you guys to focus because <laughs> I mean it's just absolutely gorgeous and our facilities are outstanding it's great well Braley thank you for coming in it's been wonderful talking with you look forward to a great season for you and for UCLA water polo thank you and we'll come back for more UCLA Bruin talk right after this brief public service announcement
A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Athletes of the Week. This week, we honor all Bruin Olympians as our Athletes of the Week. UCLA has one of the most impressive Olympic traditions of any university. From Jackie Joyner Kersey to Lisa Fernandez, 396 Bruins have combined to make 648 Olympic appearances. In 1920, the first Bruin Olympian participated on the U.S. men's water polo team, just one year after the founding of the university. UCLA has won over 241 medals, 119 of which are gold. The Bruins have had at least one competitor in every Olympics since 1920, except in 1924. Since 1932, we have won at least one gold medal. This 2012 London Olympics is no exception, with women's water polo being coached by former UCLA coach Adam Krikorian, former UCLA Hall of Fame player Karch Karai, assistant coaching the women's volleyball team, four Bruins playing on the women's soccer team, two players on the men's basketball dream team, and many, many more. Congratulations, Bruins, and good luck in London. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. A great shout out to the Bruin Olympians, and no, Allison, I was not there in 1920 watching <laughs> the first UCLA athlete. We are going to turn to a very interesting part of UCLA athletics. There's an old philosophical question. If a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make any noise? Well, if there are events going on on campus and nobody knows they're going on on campus, What's the effect on athletics? You've got to have fans in the stands, and our next guests are devoted to that. They are from UCLA's marketing department. We're pleased to welcome Robert Ewing and Jamie Arnes, and welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Thanks. Jamie, you're the assistant director of marketing now at UCLA. How do you get the message out there? Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get it out there. It's really just trying to hit as many places as possible. Uh, we rely a lot on our digital media, trying to get that out on the online sites. Uh, we also work with print advertising, um, social media, just good old fashioned hard mailers. I mean, there's really a ton of stuff that we can do and we try and do as much as possible to hit as many people as possible. You've got so many different target audiences. You've got alumni, current students, former students, people in the community. It takes a lot of focus, doesn't it, to try to target the right people? Yes, and you know, in addition to that, there's also 22 different sports, so it's not only figuring out who is right for what sport or what event, but also figuring out, you know, we try and figure out, the, geographically speaking, who's more likely to come to certain events, and there's tons of stuff to do, for sure. You're both former Bruin students, now graduates, and Robert, mm -hmm. you're in your second year with the marketing department. I uh, am. How has it been being on the inside as opposed to kind of watching the events from the outside? Well, you know, it's, it's really interesting because you don't, see it as a student you see all the production or anything like that you just see the outcome on the court uh, so you get to see all the promotions and all the the background work that goes to making the athletic event successful um, I think it's very nice to have both um, perspectives because then you can kind of see how a student would perceive it as well as uh, how a business professional would too so it's a, I, I really enjoy it Robbie, from what I understand, you were a big sports fan when you were a student here, and I'm sure you went to tons of basketball and football and hopefully other sport, mm -hmm. sporting events. What made you want to go into the marketing side and see the behind-the-scenes stuff that you're talking about? Well, it's actually kind of a funny story. I was working in music as an intern, and I was just in the middle of getting coffee, and I realized every single day I was checking this, the sports reports about UCLA football practice. So um, I just contacted a former boss and re realized that I really wanted to be in UCLA athletics because it's what I really cared about. Um, so as a result, uh, here I am. So, Jamie, a lot of a very visible part of the Bruin student population at basketball games is the den. The T-shirts are always shown on camera. You're a former president of the den. How'd you get involved in leading that group? Yeah, it was a good time. Um, honestly, I kind of didn't realize I was doing it until I was in the thick of things. Uh, I started my freshman year. You know drove from home to come to the football games before school. Obviously really liked going to UCLA and my true involvement started with camping out for basketball games actually. Uh, just went down there every single night, 
became friends with all the people who are current leaders and kind of realized what they do. A lot of what the DEN does is kind of behind the scenes and you don't realize it until you get more involved. So I thought it was really interesting and from there on, the rest is a president time, I guess. <laughs> it's a huge year for UCLA Athletics. Not only is the Rose Bowl renovation still underway, but obviously Poly Pavilion opening up again this year. How are your marketing campaigns going to capitalize on the new facilities? Oh man, there's lots. <laughs> um, I mean, it does differ from each sport. We have you know five that are going back to Poly, but just trying to emphasize the exciting part. A lot of our focus right now is you know opening night issues and figuring out how we're going to present this new building to the public for the first time or you know for the second time. There's a bunch of different events going on and how we can really position that as something that's exciting. Um, we've been in it recently and really excited mm -hmm. for it to open up because obviously we have a lot of assets that we didn't have before in terms mm -hmm. of game presentation. Robbie, obviously football and basketball, it's going to be easy to get fans there. The mm -hmm. general public loves football and basketball. It's always on TV. Everyone basically understands it. But how do you get UCLA fans to come to the Olympic sporting events that maybe they don't understand as much or they don't know as much about? I mean, it's just as mm -hmm. important to get people to those events as the football and basketball games. Well, you know, a lot of what we do on campus uh, is targeting the students who may not know that events are going on or exist. Um, so we do a lot of uh, flyering or we do face-to-face -face interaction just saying, hey guys, uh, there's a game coming up this Friday, you want to come out? And, and then students may just not even realize that's happening. Um, we, we try to push our websites as much as possible and then we get involved with the student den. Um, but a lot of the, the trouble with uh, Olympic sport attendance is that just fans don't know that they're there. So we're, we're trying to really improve that now. Well, especially now in an Olympic year with so many UCLA players excelling in the water polo competitions mm -hmm. in London and uh, women's basketball getting prominent play. I mean, these are sports that really are good at UCLA. Women's basketball is going to be great this year. Yeah. Water polo is always great. Uh, how are you going to parlay the public awareness of the Olympic sports from the Olympics into getting them into the events here? Well, you know, we're, we're really fortunate in that we have a lot of people currently in the Olympics that are, are associated with our water polo program, uh, and we have a brand new facility, so it should be a, a fairly uh, natural transition for that. Women's basketball, as uh, Jamie's well aware of, is, is on the rise, and we've got a great new recruiting class as well as a uh, brand new poly pavilion, so I think uh, we, we're, going, we're going in the right direction. We're going to keep on improving. So. Yeah, Jamie, UCLA men's basketball obviously has been internationally known for years. Women's basketball has had their moments uh, a few years ago, made it to the NCAA tournament. Last year, a rebuilding year with some injuries, but the team really should be terrific this year. What kind of plans do we have to, to get people in to see this great product? Yeah, actually, I just finished my marketing plan yesterday, so good What can you there. share with us? Um, well, the first thing that's going to hit is we're going out with a big campaign preseason. Uh, the theme would be Get Close, kind of a pun on Corey's last name, our head coach, but also kind of the you know intimate, personal, and emotional reaction that you get with being part of women's basketball. Obviously, the you know closeness that you get and all the benefits of being a fan there is unmatched in any other sport. So we have just created a thing called a Bruin Dana. That's a, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're having those in production right now, and then um, that will be how we get this grassroots kind of campaign started, mm -hmm. uh, starting in September. Everyone in the world is seemingly involved in social media. Mm -hmm. And I know the UCLA Sports Information Department has their Twitter accounts, UCLA Game Day, that you know sends blasts out on updates of games. How do you guys work with their department to use social media to capitalize on getting fans to the events? And how do you utilize it to improve fan attendance? Well, uh, with social media, uh, we have uh, a director who's very, very good at it, Eliza. Is, is handling all of that. But w what we do is we handle the uh, DEN Facebook group. So what we're trying to do is get students to be more involved in that so they get all their up-to-date information from both UCLABruins.com as well as our Facebook and Twitter. Um, so we're, we're really trying to push that this upcoming year and, and uh, get people to use what's out there and uh, keep it up-to-date and exclusive. Robbie, Jamie mentioned the, the Wooden Center, and last year for women's volleyball, the Wooden Center had lines that were an hour long to get in because there just weren't enough seats available. Mm -hmm. Now you move back into a 13,000-seat arena, a state-of-the-art arena, 
how do you get people in to, to see this great product that won the national championship a year ago? Well, I, as you mentioned, we, we have a great team. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of returning players as well as a great incoming class. Um, so there's already a great product. Uh, plus, we're playing most of our games in Wooden, uh, the Wooden Center still. So our last two games will be in Poly Pavilion. Uh, so those will be very heavily uh, attended if we can get all the right promotions going. Uh, we have um, some youth events going on with that as well as uh, faculty appreciation and Veterans Days. And, and uh, so we're, we're really trying to ramp it up so it's a very special um, two games. And it doesn't hurt. The opponents are Stanford and USC for those two games. <laughs> yeah, so. that helps too. <laughs> Well, you guys were telling us a little bit before this show about an upcoming event with the football team. Obviously, mm -hmm. their camp is right around the corner. Season is now under a month away, which is pretty exciting. But tell us a little bit about that event that you were telling us about. Well, so uh, the event we're planning is a, a meet the team event for the UCLA football team. And uh, we're having every single player on the team available for autographs, as well as having very fan-specific events. Uh, so like a live DJ, um, as well as a 20-yard dash for the kids, and a field goal kicking competition as well as we're going to give out um, some exclusive uh, giveaways like our, our 2012-13 poster um, and then we're going to have some other booths that fans might be interested in. So it should be a very fun event and something that it's, it's an exclusive uh, opportunity for UCLA fans. And tell us where it is and when it is. So it's uh, going to be at Drake Stadium on August 18th from about 3.30 till 5.30 um, and we're going to start the event at 3.30 but the autographs will begin at 4. So it just gives people the, the chance to get there and get situated and plan their, their attack of who they want to get to sign their jerseys and balls and as well as posters. Jamie, you, obviously you were a fan when you were a student. If you're president of the Den, you're a, you're a devoted fan. <laughs> how, how did it feel actually going into a professional capacity after school and realizing this is going to be your career, UCLA Athletics? Yeah. Um, at first, you know, a lot of the work as a student, you know, I interacted a lot with the professional staff and I also worked at the ticket office when I was a student, so I kind of had a one-two punch of getting involved but not realizing it when I was younger. And um, once I kind of put two and two together that this is actually a job and a career path, I was like, this is awesome, I'm taking this one. Um, unfortunately, I was given an opportunity to do it. I think it's really exciting. It all, Robbie mentioned, it definitely helps coming from a fan's perspective first and really thinking about the most important thing is how your fans perceive whatever you're doing. So that's always been helpful to have that in the back of my mind, but it's been wonderful. The fact that you are both very recent students here, I mean, you've really got your finger on the pulse of the student concerns. And I, there's been criticism over the years that UCLA has a lot of alums that come to the game and a lot of students don't. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the targeting efforts to really reach out to the students. Yeah, um, for our students, this is actually one of my newly acquired uh, responsibilities. I'm really looking forward to it. I think that we just want to have a little bit more fun with it, a little sassy attitude. You know, they're young, they appreciate it. If it doesn't sound like it's, you know, marketing talk, that's our one opportunity to kind of take risks and have it be a little bit more lively. Uh, we're also working on a rewards program to possibly incentivize people on the whole course of the year. Not finalized yet, but time is ticking, so mm -hmm. hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. um, but really trying to increase and encourage people to have that you know, crazy fanmanship mm -hmm. type of way. I feel like a lot of people don't realize that that's an option and kind of planting the seed there and then getting them to really embrace broom culture. Mm -hmm. I feel like with all of our sports, there's got to be one of them out there for you, if not all <laughs> of them. So. Mm -hmm. That's kind of our plan of attack for this year. Well, it's a very exciting time for UCLA Athletics. Robbie, Jamie, thanks for coming in and visiting with us. And Thank as we you. said, the season is just around the corner, so we hope you'll be visiting with us as the Bruin Athletic teams get underway for 2012-2013. That's going to do it for this edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. For Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus, thanking you for joining us. Until next time, so long from Westwood.